Air rolling is one of the hardest things to learn in all of Rocket League. And so today I'm going to break it all down step by step and give you guys the most detailed air rolling guide that I can. Let's get straight into it. First, we have to touch on what is air rolling and why we do it. Air rolling is when you spin or tilt your car in the air using either manual air roll or directional air roll. If you were to normally hold your analog stick to the left, your car would spin like this. However, if you were to also hold manual air roll at the same time, your car would instead barrel roll. Now, the reason we air roll in Rocket League is to allow ourselves to make adjustments in the air and gain better control of our car. This can give you an advantage when shooting, trying to control the ball in the air, or trying to land properly. Air roll is easily one of the most important aspects in Rocket League gameplay, but is also going to feel like one of the hardest parts of the game to learn when you're starting out. So before we start, let's quickly cover air roll bindings and settings as these can differ from person to person. Now personally, I have normal air roll on L1, air roll left on square and air roll right on circle. The reason I have these three bound this way is because in my head, square is on left and circle is on the right. And so it only made sense to make it that way. And normal air roll being bound to L1 is there just because I want to be able to use normal air roll very quickly while in the air as it's what I use for my small adjustments. And seeing as my index finger naturally sits on L1, it seemed appropriate for me. L1 is also my power slide button, so these two work out quite well. Now, those are what I normally suggest people have if they want to have all three bound. But you can very easily just have normal air roll and one directional air roll bound, and you would be completely fine. I find that I barely ever use air roll right, even though I have it bound. And honestly, there are plenty of people much better than me that don't even have directional air roll bound. They just use normal air roll. But I do suggest learning a directional air roll bind as it helps with control and lets you do certain things you can't do with just normal air roll. Okay, with all of the settings and all of the prerequisites out of the way, let's quickly go over the basics. Normal air roll, like you saw before, changes your car spinning to more of a barrel roll movement. Normal air roll is quite helpful for making small movements while in the air, whether that's angling the car slightly just to get a better touch, a better shot, or landing with the wheels down. The majority of the time, I would say your normal air roll is used for corrections and adjustments rather than big movements. Then we have directional air roll. Directional air roll is how I personally make the majority of my movements in the air whenever I'm spinning, as it allows you to both spin and maintain movement in the direction you want to go with a tornado spin. You see, if I use normal air roll and then I push my analog stick to the side and then up, my car completely spins out. But if I do the same and use directional air roll, my car stays moving forwards, but the nose of my car starts to move. This seems like a really small thing that couldn't really be useful in game, but once you develop an understanding of different movements using directional air roll, you can start to control your car to move a lot more naturally than you could with normal air roll. The mechanic I just mentioned, the tornado spin, is the base movement for a lot of aerial control using directional air roll, and we'll go into understanding those movements now. So, first things first, let's cover the different movements using normal air roll. Jumping, holding normal air roll, and pressing left will barrel roll your car left. Pressing right will barrel roll right. Backwards and forwards won't affect anything, and any way you hold the stick diagonally will result in flipping diagonally. Manual air roll is easy to understand. You hold it, and instead of spinning, your car will flip in the direction of the analog stick. With directional air roll, it's a little bit more complicated. I'll be using air roll left for these examples, but if you use air roll right, just flip them around. So jumping and holding air roll left will just act the same as holding left and using normal air roll it'll barrel roll you to the left. Holding air roll left and pressing right, however, is gonna cause your car to perform a tornado spin because you're asking the car to twist in two different ways. This movement causes the nose of the car to tilt upwards and is very important to learning directional air roll. But holding air roll left and pressing left does the opposite. It tilts the nose of the car downwards. This can be known as a reverse tornado spin. This is used a little less when air rolling, but still can be useful. Now, up, down, and diagonals all perform diagonal spins, but to different degrees. Getting used to all the different movements and understanding how each of them will help can take time, but a lot of the movements aren't really that useful. 90% of the time, you will only really wanna focus on normal tornado spinning and then a few small movements to adjust. But if you're someone who really wants to focus on all of the movements right at the beginning, then you're in luck as the next section is how to train all of your air roll movements. First thing I have to say, because you need to understand this before moving forwards, even though we're training air roll, it doesn't mean you should always be air rolling in game. In fact, People have said that perfect Rocket League wouldn't need any air roll at all. And that's because you would always be in the perfect position and you wouldn't need to readjust. But we are not perfect and we're not always in the perfect position. And so we do need to adjust. 
So try to use air roll only when adjusting instead of spinning the entire time. I know if you've ever seen any video from me, I know what you're thinking. I still spin way too much and it's a really bad habit of mine. So do as I say, not as I do. If I could go back and, and just relearn everything, I would stop myself doing this as it makes you way more consistent with your touches as you move forward into learning the different kinds of air roll maneuvers. Now, getting into the full training routine that I recommend to those of you who want to master air roll, please remember this takes time. There is no cheat code. There is no secret tip. There are things that you just have to dedicate to learning. And this is probably the biggest one. If you're struggling, just know we all struggle to learn this. It's unavoidable. So starting off, the first thing we want to focus on is basically just hovering. This is a very standard drill to keep your car from touching the ground while experimenting with different air roll inputs. Test what each direction does with normal air roll and with directional air roll. Like I said earlier, if you want to keep your car up, you'll have a much easier time doing so if you learn the tornado spin. But it is important to understand the other movements as well. You can refer back to the different movements section earlier on as you go through these drills if you want a visual of what each input is going to do to your car so you can remember that as you train. While hovering and changing air roll inputs, try to circle the ball. All you want to focus on is keeping your car up while air rolling. Keep in mind that some of these movements will just spin your car out and hit the ground. So it's not that you're failing, you can't get it. It's just some movements turn your car downwards. But using these drills over time, you're going to be able to counteract this and you'll be able to recover in time. This can be done for two or three minutes just to remind yourself what each movement does. The next drill can be done for about five minutes or so, and that's starting in one goal and flying to the other goal. You might have seen this in other videos of me. I firmly stand by this. First, you want to do this with normal air roll with a variation of movements. Like I said before, you'll very quickly understand what movements result in your car tilting downwards and hitting the ground. You then want to fly slightly out to the sides and air roll yourself back into the middle of the goal. Do this for both sides and then repeat again with directional air roll. This really is the one drill I did over and over and over again when I was learning, which is why I'm so adamant on talking about it in these kind of videos. I think it's just one of those drills you can start doing very early on and very quickly get used to what works and what doesn't. It keeps you actively moving the entire time and once you get good, you can even autopilot it and become way more comfortable. The next drill you can bang out in about five minutes is just learning to fly backwards. This doesn't seem like it would be that useful in game, but if you can fly backwards, you are taking a massive step towards complete control of your car. Flying backwards switches the way you need to steer to control your car, and so being able to do that instinctively in a game can be the difference between a goal or not a goal. Basic drills for flying backwards are just keeping your car in the air and flying around, or going around the outside of the field in a circle, plenty of ways to do it. Not the easiest drill and one that you might find really frustrating at times, but trust me, it does help you out a lot. If you then want to really challenge yourself, you can do this with both sides going sideways as well, flying sideways across the field, up and down and around. Next up is landing training. This is literally something you can do for one to two minutes and you'll get it down straight away. All you need to do for this is try jumping off the wall or flying into a wall and air rolling so you're landing wheels down and landing cleanly. You can kind of just throw yourself around and force yourself to get into the habit of landing cleanly. Once again, a very short drill, but very effective. Next up goes kind of hand in hand with that one and it's something called chaos training. This is driving full speed around the map flying everywhere while constantly air rolling, changing from directional to normal air roll, then flipping in random directions, landing quickly, taking off again, going side to side, backwards, forwards, doing a bit of everything at full pace and all while trying to spin nonstop. This is going to teach you not only all the different air roll movements, what works, what doesn't, but also landing control, recoveries, aerial control, backwards aerial control, everything. And so for this one, I don't normally put a time on it as it's something you should do until you feel comfortable. But if you're someone that's trying to get all these in one little routine, then I would say aim for about seven to 10 minutes. Lastly in your routine, you have the workshop maps and the pillars map. Now the pillars map should be used by those of you who don't have access to the workshop map function. I'm sorry, console players. I wish you had this option, but I, unfortunately you don't. You have the pillars map. So that's what we're working with. You can use the pillars in the map to work through a figure eight motion, air rolling the whole time or flying backwards. You can go side to side, fully just around one pillar. It's really up to you. Figure out which part you think you need to work on the most and then use the pillars map to help. For the workshop maps, the one everyone suggests is a rings map. I use a few different ones, but the neon lights one is pretty chill and a really good way to start using rings to learn air roll. However, there is a big difference between using these properly and using them badly. And that's what we're going to cover next. It's now time to talk about the misconceptions about air roll because I see way too many people ask the same questions and have the wrong idea about things. So 
First things first, stop over air rolling. I covered this a little bit before, but just to really go into it, people get into the habit of learning how to air roll by air rolling all the time. And then in game, they air roll way too much and it ends up hurting them. Like I said before, I would know I'd, I'd do the same thing. Now, rings maps are great, but you should be looking to learn optimal air rolling rather than just spinning out and slowing yourself down because you just hold it down. Learning how to air roll and learning when to air roll are two very different things. When learning how, it's fine to push yourself and try to stay in control the entire time, but when it comes to gameplay, you only want to air roll to make adjustments in the air so that you can be accurate. In fact, if you're lined up with the ball and you don't have to adjust, not air rolling will get you to that ball faster. So learn to only use air roll for adjustments to make you more accurate in the air. The next thing people seem to get wrong is they always ask, which is better, air roll left or air roll right? I can tell you it's literally just a preference, but if you are learning it all from the beginning, the biggest tip I can give you is to pick whichever direction is opposite to the natural direction that you use for manual air roll. Lastly, people train and give up, or they say things like, no tutorial explains the movements I need to do so I can't learn it. But you have to understand that a tutorial cannot give you instructions on how to control your car in every single situation. Tutorials teach you the drills and the movements you need to learn to then take into those situations. The majority of the learning comes from trial and error, trying to apply what you learn from drills and from tutorials and use it in game. Understanding how to control my car in the air genuinely took me hundreds of hours. And at the time, there weren't actually that many tutorials around at all. It's just something you had to train and had to learn by yourself. The biggest advice I could give for those who are struggling is to watch gameplay or watch a streamer with a controller overlay and just look at their movement in the air. You'll see that oftentimes the stick might move many times in just a second. And that's something that you will achieve over time but it's not something that comes quickly. So hopefully you stick with it. Don't give up. And if you build yourself a little routine out of the training drills in this video, I truly believe you'll get there sooner than you think. Anyway, that's all for me. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.